that video today the last that video we did was like a year ago how will i go about doing this is um well i'll go through all my openers damage dealers and then losers last let's just get to it all right we've got tier one openers meaning units that have super high base speed so this is my rod 315 max crit rate and some crit damage this is enough to 100 to zero most damage dealers damage dealers like politis rb this will 100 to zero those units so that's good enough he is on alexis basket i like alexis basket more than arnell because i never get lucky and alexis basket means well at least i can see a gap once in a while next we have assassin sit he's sitting at 3132 speed behind ron because ron i feel is more useful than assassin sit because ron you can pivot into other different drops but a sit he's like single target damage only right so i i currently have two openers above 310 we go to the next tier now, which is like around 300. I don't have Payra gear. I don't have ML Ring gear. I don't have Acoli gear because I don't think they are good. Next, we have Moon Bunny Dominil. Uh, I have her at 294 with the RTA buff. She's 301. She's there mainly to act as a attack buffer and opener. Uh, I have her on Garden Ice Crystals. I think the best in slot artifact for her is the one with the totem girl. Uh, Shura. You can default attack to push your team, which is good. That one, I think it's best. It's not second would be Doctor's Back. And then we have DJB, another opener. It's at 288. He has a 144 effect resistance together with Bastion of Hope. They're basically, again, as an opener to cleanse away like Peira or Celia's buffs. Um, next we have uh, Concrete Lilith. This is very meta. So mine's at 297. I'm using Border Coin. I think the best is not artifact is Champion's Trophy. Nostalgic Music Box, also really, really a good artifact for her. Next, we have Judge Kisei. I have her on 27 speed, 170 effectiveness, right? And I have Champion's Trophy on her for the added effectiveness. That's gonna bump her up to nearly 200. People underestimate this a lot. It resets enemy skill cooldowns, right? Up to three turns, that's huge. It basically renders your enemy team pretty useless. His skills are a big part of this game. She also comes with a defense brick on skill one. So that's gonna help you do more damage as the match goes on. My Flinica is a hybrid damage dealer Flinica, um, which means I'm not running an effect on this ring. You don't need to like get a lot of damage. This is good enough. It's good chip damage to set up, right? So she can use S2 to lock Spur, and then it can soften up units like Stene for your other units to kill them. Next up, we have Sage Bao. I ha uh, his gear hasn't changed from the last video. Speed, immunity, I think immunity is a must for him because a lot of times you'll be drafting him into things like Acid, and, and you don't want him to be silenced. Uh, this is a speed bar. Now, you can run a resistance bow at 250, 260, that's fine. With like a Bastion artifact from the guild. And it will still work fine. But this is good if you want to cut Ron. Green sit, A sit. This is a very good speed to cut that. All right, this is my Aeola. I don't think this is a good build for Aeola. It's either you are slower than the hand guy or you're faster than the end. So I'm in the middle. It sucks. All right, Solitaria. I would say you want to get 290 speed. I don't use her, so I'm not giving her the good gear. Now we're going to move on to the damage dealers. These are our attack scaling YOLO damage dealers. We'll start with Landy. She's at 260 speed. Landy, she's on Guiding Light, which is uh, probably her best in slot artifact. Next, we have Sage Vivian. Same thing. You see the same amount of speed, similar crit damage, similar attack, right? Focuses on speed, less on damage dealing stats, but it's good enough. Tiger House is best in slot for her, in my opinion. To me, she's a supportive damage dealer that is there to help other units do more with the crit damage buff. Next, we have Green Vildred. This is one of my favorite units of late because he also brings a speed imprint to the team, right? He makes everybody faster and he packs a punch. My Vildred is on similar unity because I, I like to crit violets a lot. His gear is going to be, again, very similar to Landy's gear. Okay, we have Ludwig next. He's using a weaker set. He's at uh, 230 speed only because like I find it really hard to drop Ludwig nowadays. A lot of things counter him. Ludwig is very weak to strip and debuffs, right? Because he needs to maintain the invincibility buff. Next, we have Straze. He's on a zero combat because Straze has very shit awakening. This is my Straze build. I like him at this speed because with a speed imprint, most of the time be faster than a Ras, Hand Guy. Plus, his recent buff makes his S3 uncounterable. He won't be countered by the Lion, he won't be countered by Rem. So it's very good now. Um, next, we have RB. My RB is again similar to Straze, right? You'll see the same stats. Like, there's my openers and then the people that follow the openers that can take the turn right after the openers. So we'll have them at like 250 speed. So that's our focus, right? Next we have Closer Charles. I use Closer Charles not as an opener, but as a closer, as his name implies. So I have him on attack boots. He's on a spit speed set, but he's got no speed, right? He's got nearly max crit damage. He's got pretty decent attack. I have uh, Shepherd of the Hollow artifact on him. 
Honestly, I think uh, Simple Beauty is better. Portrait is better. But sometimes, I, I just... This is a filler artifact. And then similar to Closer Charles, I have Commander Pavel. But he has speed though. It's different. Because like, I like to drop Commander Pavel versus Politis. So I think that it's important for him to have some speed. So that he can actually gain 25% combat readiness. And with this speed, 25% combat readiness is usually enough to take the turn. So that's why I choose to go with speed boots instead of attack boots for Commander Pavel. Now some of you are arguing that this will not be enough damage to kill Proof of Valor A Ravi. And you're right. 99% of the time, nothing is killing Proof of Valor A Ravi anyway. So it doesn't matter. Why am I not in Guiding Light? Guiding Light implies that you're not taking turn one. If I drop for turn one, why do I need that gang light? If no one's taking turn before me, we don't need to hide. We fight in the light. Watcher Shuri. This is one of my favorite units too. Right, I have him on Sashe, which means he helps the other people in the team move. He's on speed and immunity. His gear is two years old. I have not touched his gear for two years. He works just fine. Next up, we have Huaya. She's currently at 254 speed. I want to get her to 270, but it's hard. It's really hard. All right, 270 with 7,000 attack. I think it's important that you get 7,000 attack on Hoya. It's not worth it going 270 speed and having 6,000. I think that's the point where you will kill most Belliants. Uh, she's on hit set because it's a filler. Honestly, you can go immunity on her. You can go pen on her. Immunity and pen is both good. Pen set still helps the S1. But immunity is probably more useful. All right, next up we have C Dom. She's on pen set. She doesn't need a lot of speed because usually you set her up with people that crit. Yeah, this is my C Dom. Tag House is best in slot artifact for her. Next, we have Stene. I have Stene on pen set because when she moves, I want something to die. When you do your, your soul burns before you S3, that pen set affects those attacks. Uh, she has pretty much no crit chance awakening. It's horrible as a damage dealer. Next, we have BBK. I don't use her anymore, but if I were to use her, I would say going a resistance build is better. Someone tries to cleave you, you drop the resistance BBK, you're set. He has to ban it or he has to pivot uh, his draft in a way to counter your resistance BBK. Basically, resistance BBK, you take away the speed here and convert all of that to resistance. You want something along the lines of 150 resistance. Right, next we have Roy Mustang. High speed on pen set. And look at, the, look at the crit damage, 239. He doesn't need a lot of crit damage at all. His multipliers are crazy. Having him at this speed means you'll surprise a lot of damage dealers like Arby. The Rimaru's will be faster than them and then you can just kill them. Next we have Politis. I don't really have good gear on Politis because I only draft her because I don't want other people to draft her. I really should give her better gear. I use Tiger House on her but Abyssal Crown is fine as well. Depending on your team comp, right? Like if you want front loader damage, then Tiger House is better. And uh, then we have Milim right now. Again, similar to how my land is here. They have the same gears. Tag of Hells because you can Soul Burn for extra turn. Next we have Fire Mercedes. I think she's best on counter. I think she's really, really strong. Especially when someone tries to cleave you. If you're on counter set, you can counter attack. Followed by Magic for friends. And just wipe out the enemy team. Very, very strong anti-cleave unit. Lastly, we have Operator Cigarette. My Osig is no longer a fast Osig. Uh, here's the thing about OP Sig. Why do I not draft OP Sig anymore? Let me just tell you, right? Okay. Reason being, enemy drop barrier, you draft OP Sig. What is the best case scenario you have here? You have a 50 50 at best. And I will always lose the 50 50 because I'm a public figure. I can barely win 85 15s. Why would I try for a 50 50? Next, we have Rimuru. His gear hasn't changed since the debut video. I have him at 234 speed. I think this is a good speed for him because he gains 30% combat readiness. And 230 means you analyze enemy opener. You're gonna cut. Um, I have Merciless Glut on him to do more damage with a single target attack. Next, we have Little Queen Charlotte. I don't use her anymore because most of the time I ban a Robbie. <laughs> Uh, there are many ways to build uh, LQC. A lot of people go 20,000 HP, zero speed. Because LQC has innate turn cycling. Whenever someone tries to attack her, she gains combat readiness. I think Hellcutter is definitely best as for her. I've seen people go uh, immunity with Pensa. I don't use her at all, so this is not a good reference. Next, we have Celine. Uh, she's not a turn one unit, but when you pick her, you pick her to win. The enemy has to ban Selene or they will lose. You want to focus on damage on Selene. So my Selene is geared with damage with a little bit of speed because she gains only 20% here. But with her artifact, she gains an additional 24%. That means she is going to take the turn. So you just want to focus on damage, get 200 speed. Everything else is damage. I think we're done, right? We're, we're done. Did I miss out anybody, guys? Hello. Fuck, we forgot about her. Dude, who remembers her? Haha, <laughs> she's a damage dealer. We forgot about her. Yo, she's so bad. 
I hope they buff her. All right, now that we're done with the damage dealers, let's go. Let's move on to the debuff damage dealers, the debuffers. So this is my Karen. I don't give a shit about her gear. Her gear is very old. You can see prophetic candlestick because I don't even have an artifact for her. But basically, if you want to run Karen, you want like 15, 16k HP and then sub speed and then immunity and you're set. You don't really care about effectiveness. Like you're not trying to debuff things like Soul Weavers with high resistance anyway. Next we have Silver Blade Araminta. I have her at 250 speed with 200 effectiveness on Abyssal Crown. So when she uses her S3, like I kind of expect her to lock down the enemy. But 15% exists so it's kind of hard to pull off a debuff team nowadays. And then we have Summertime Aetheria. Her artifact is best in slot. Similar speed to Araminta, 250 speed. 194 effectiveness on her and then we have my Ida. I don't use her This is not the gear you should reference for a good Ida. I think you want 230 speed and above and then the rest do damage wherever you can get and of course Tiger House is the best in slot artifact for her Right, it's time to move on to bruisers first. We have Apocalypse Ravi MVP most valuable player most popular Character in the game. What else can you say? She's the strongest unit in the game Proof of Valor, in my opinion, is probably the best in slot artifact on her because she literally can't die. Nothing in the game can kill it. I use Crimson Seed. When I draft her, it's usually with Cleaver, so I don't really care about Proof of Valor. My A Ravi, as you can see, is quite squishy. She's on speed and pen with 320 crit damage because it's nice to see big numbers. Next, we have A Ravi's counter, Alencia. In the long run, Alencia is good versus A Ravi. Uh, I have my Alencia on injury set, but I never draft her anyway. I think that her artifact is close to best in slot for her, but Edward's artifact is probably the best in slot for her. Next, we have FCC. I like drafting FCC even though she's a bruiser. I have her at 269 speed. Nobody sees 270 FCC coming that crits on them. So normally, I drop FCC into Stenny. She will do enough chip damage that my next damage dealer will kill Stenning. We have the rat, Shu. She's getting a skin, by the way. E7 World Cup winner chose to give Shu a new skin. So Shu is getting a skin. For those of you who don't know, her current skin uh, is being memed. This is Elmo. Do you guys see Elmo? <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, I have her at 270 speed because like I said, if I like the unit, I'm gonna give it good gear. Yeah, so meta shoes are usually on pen set and they're usually slower. Next, we have the lion. I only draft her when I'm feeling like taking a break. So my Belion is zero speed. I don't intend to ever take a turn, right? She's on Elbris, counter immunity. She's just there to Elbris and do her thing. Next, we have Archdemon Shadow. She's on counter and immunity. She's basically there to debuff. As the game goes on, she does more and more damage. Um, I'm using Fairy Tail for a Nightmare on her. I think it's best in slot. Next, we have Senya. I really want to give her more speed because I like this unit. I think a 250 Senya uh, is, is, is good for my team, right? If you're running a fast team like me, like you like Flitica opener, Moon Bunny opener, you want her to be a follow-up and uh, 210 is just way too slow. Her artifact is the best in slot for her. Unfortunately, I don't have enough copies to maximum break it. I'm using the Greater Attack buff uh, exclusive equipment because again, we like front load the damage. All right, moving on, we have Rem, Secret Scythe, counter immunity, no speed. I just want her to do as much counters as possible. I draft her usually with Belion when I want to AFK. That's when I draft her. Otherwise, I will never draft her. This is my Violet. He's on Lifesteal. He's on Moonlight Dreamblade. This would probably be one of the best uh, Violets in the game. 3.7k attack, 18,000 HP, right? 250 crit damage. Here we have the counterpart, Remnant Violet. Basically, he's geared exactly the same as the Green Violet, but shittier. That's what I did. And then we have Edward Elric. His gear hasn't changed. There is a debut video. Millions of people have watched the debut video, but not you. So anyway, I have him on speed and pen. You see similar stats to A. Ravi. Mostly HP, crit rate, crit damage. Secret size, so he has some semblance of sustain. Next, we have Lionheart Sermia. Draco plate artifact, speed, and crit set. I built her like a standard damage dealer. Ideally, again, like all my damage dealers, I hope they can get 240, 250 speed, but it's very hard because you need to be tanky. Next, we have Kron. Kron is a bruiser. That's why he's not in the damage dealer section. Why? Because he has infinite HP. Think about that. He would have tanked a million damage because he has immortality. That's why he's under the bruiser section. Counter Kron is the way to go. Like, this is recorded pre buff. He's gonna get a buff, which gives him evasion, so people can't strip immortality. Why is Dust Devil at plus 27? Uh, for those of you who are newer to Epic 7, this is a fact. Plus 30 Dust Devil 
doesn't proc as much as plus 27 Dust Devil. Because I have a plus 30 Dust Devil on Spirit Eye Selene. Which we're gonna talk about next because she's also a boozer. Because I have a plus 30 Dust Devil on her and it never procs. It never, never procs. Stop at plus 27. Trust. Anyway, take this with a grain of salt. I think that you want more speed on her. I would say a good speed for her would be like 250. Let's move on to our next bruiser, Specimen Sass. Yes, he's a bruiser. He's the universal molecule. You can build him anything. Speed, bruiser, it don't matter. Every game is a spec game because Lightstorm has a 10,000% multiplier. You could go 300 speed and you will still one tap something if it's stunned. I have mine on 20,000 HP just to troll people. Should we max counter spec S1 for what? All I care about is the stun dude. Nobody cares about the damage of the S1. All you care about is the grab. That's it. Next, we have T Surin. I don't use her at all. I think that you can go uh, Alexis Basket on her. You can go uh, Celine's Artifact on her. Moon, uh, Moonlight Dream Day, like I do. It's fine. RNL is fine too. Uh, she used to be meta. She's still good now, though. Don't get me wrong. But I just can't see myself using her. Let me tell you why. Because she leaves a debuff. And as a cleaver, I don't like debuffs at all. Because Edward, Dilly Bat, and all those people will be coming for you. All right, next we have A Tai Win. He's a very good unit to pick when your opponent drafts. Sage Ball. He dropped Sage Ball. You drop A Tai Win. Nobody's happy. Lose lose situation. You say the same thing. He says the same thing. Both of you go. Ah, shit. A Tai Win, I have him uh, on a damage dealing build. 280% crit damage right there. With some effectiveness. Next, we have Designer Lily Bat. Because of this unit, you can no longer be a debuff from me. You just, it doesn't exist. I gear as a damage dealer. Basically, wherever you find attack on a um, damage dealer piece, I change it with defense. Next bruiser we have Inferno Kawazu. This guy's a bruiser because he needs to be attacked first with an AoE before he does his thing. So this is my Inferno Kawazu. Basically, try to get some speed on him. You want to be able to proc S2 and then steal the turn and then kill something. That's his job. Next, we have Hand Guy. My Hand Guy is on effect of the set, not an immunity set because why would you need an immunity set if you're Hand Guy? Why? You don't need it. It doesn't matter if he's Diva. He's just gonna cleanse it and then he's gonna cleanse everybody. I don't have immunity on him. In fact, I have hit set on him. Why? Totally not because of the speed rolls, but because I like to strip buffs. I have no Warhorn like everybody else. Last but not least, we have more. I don't use him at all. He's on speed and pen. He's on justice for all. I don't even know why. I wish I farmed enough Banshees to give him good gear. I think that you want to go counter on him. Definitely. And that's a wrap. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. I love reading your comments. I appreciate your very presence in the comment section. And I look forward to seeing you there every video. Bye!